we caught a live silver fish and we've kept it as our lab pet since. Hi, I'm Joshua Lim. You're watching The Library Report, a series where we explore the illuminating stories and colourful characters found within and beyond our libraries and archives. In this episode, we answer your burning questions about how conservation work is carried out at the National Archives. Hi, I'm Sanira. I'm a senior conservator with the National Archives of Singapore. I'm here today to answer some of your questions. Let's begin. What's your main job scope? So I basically oversee the Archives Conservation Lab and with that comes the main responsibility of overseeing the preventive and conservative work here. Besides ensuring that the paper-based records are conserved according to industry best practices, we also oversee uh, and do a lot of outreach, training and development as well. How do you become a book and paper conservator? I studied history and political science and from there I became a history teacher. But I've always had a very close relationship with art. So from teaching, I joined Madame Tussauds Singapore where I managed a team of artists. So our main responsibility was to ensure that the wax figures looked as lifelike as possible. So from there, it was a very natural progression to combine both my background in history and art. And here I am conserving Singapore's important historical documents. What is the favourite item you have conserved? It's got to be the Teluk Blanga map I recently conserved. It is where I grew up. I spent 25 years of my life there. What's your work outfit of the day? We are usually in a lab coat, especially when we are doing treatments. So this is uh, what our lab coat looks like. Uh, but say if we are doing anything that is a little dirtier, perhaps uh, working with uh, mouldy items or doing a wet treatment, we will wear an apron, right? So like this. And also nitrile gloves. So these protects us, especially when we are dealing with uh, hazardous items. But say for example, if we are working with very sensitive media, like photographs and all that, we will use a lint-free cotton glove. And you will also always will see us with a, a brush or a spatula. And this is why pockets are very important because, you know, we always need to carry these tools around. What do you do in a typical work day? There are no typical work days. Every day is different. So that's what makes the job very exciting. How big is your team? We have eight members in the lab. The longest serving member has been with us for 42 years and counting. And there are some of us who are quite new to the job, so about two to three years. And most of us have learned our skills on the job through training and courses. Are conservation and preservation the same? Conservation is actually a subset of preservation. So if you see preservation as a large umbrella, conservation is one way to preserve an item. So say for example, in NAS, we also take photos and we make digital copies. So that is called digitization. That is one way to preserve. And conservation with our treatments, that is another way to prolong the life of our records. What are the steps in conservation generally? The first thing we do when we receive a record for conservation is that we do photo documentation of it. So we take the pictures to capture you know, what kind of condition it came to us in. And from there, we will then do a condition report. A condition report is very similar to like a medical report that a doctor does. What are the damages that we see? What are the problems that we see? And what kind of treatment do we propose for the record? So from there, we will then do do some tests and analysis. So these are to ensure that whatever treatment we are thinking of doing, it will actually work and it will not harm the record in any way. So it can be things like ink tests, pH tests and so on. And then we will start with our treatment and after treatment, we will complete the whole process with more photos so that we get, get a nice before and after. After which it will be returned to the collection owner. How do you restore or protect documents that are damaged? Conservation and restoration are quite different. So in restoration, you're concerned with how the item looks. 
So the main focus is about making it look brand new or aesthetically pleasing again. But in conservation, we are not so concerned with making the item look brand new but we want to arrest the damage so that the artifact or the item doesn't deteriorate in future, it remains unchanged. And in conservation, we are also very mindful that whatever we do must be reversible. It should be able to be undone without causing any kind of harm to the object. Although some of our treatments can get quite lengthy, I will share with you how we repair torn documents. Okay, so this is how we do a basic tear repair. There is a tear here. So we're going to mend this so that it stops tearing. The first thing we need is Japanese kozo paper. We call it kozo tissue as well. So we want to tear a piece that's small enough or big enough to cover the tear. Right, so I will just tear something like this. And if you see, it has these really long fibres. So we want these fibres to kind of overlap the tear. So this is a mylar sheet, right? So it helps me while I am going to paste some adhesive. So this is a wheat starch paste. It's a type of glue, but it's very natural. So if we want to ever reverse this, so if, say, I made a mistake with the tear repair, I can simply use water and it will come right off. So I'm going to apply some wheat starch here. Right, and we're going to put it over our tear. Right, so this is where the bone folder comes in. And we need our reme, which is polyester. So I'm just going to rub this down. So what the reme does is it will absorb the any additional or excess wheat starch. So once that's done, we leave it on. We take our blotter, put it on top and we add a weight. So what this will do is to adhere the kozo to the mat. So this will sit for a couple of hours and that's how tear repair is done. What happens when you make a mistake? In conservation, it's always a very slow and calculated process. We do a lot of tests and analysis before we actually begin a treatment. But in any case, when a mishap happens, we make sure to document it and we also use it as a learning point to find out what went wrong and so that you know, others can learn from it as well. What are some common environmental factors that cause print or paper to degrade? It is almost always improper care, so high humidity, direct or prolonged sunlight, neglect in terms of water damage and so on, all these will cause your precious documents to deteriorate. What is the oldest artefact in the repository? So I have it right here. This is a straight settlement volume. That is from Penang to the colonial office in India, Bengal. So this was conserved many years ago and it is uh, from 1800 to 1802. It was conserved using a method called leaf casting, but this is no longer practiced by the lab today. Have you encountered creepy crawlies during conservation? The answer is yes, many times. And most of them are usually silverfish, termites and beetles. Recently, we caught a live silverfish. It was actually found on a board during our spring cleaning. So Michelle quickly ran and got a glass container and we managed to then catch the silverfish and we've kept it as our lab pet since. What would you tell someone who wants to be a conservator? A proficiency in the arts, chemistry or any related field would serve you very well. What are your hobbies and interests outside of work? I love sculpting. I like to make a little human heads. I, you know, missed making, uh, missed working on faces quite a bit because I used to do that quite often in uh, Madame Tussauds. So this is a way for me to reminisce my previous <laughs> job. That's all for our questions today. Thank you for watching this episode of The Library Report. Leave a like or a comment to let us know what you think. If you like what you saw today, please click the subscribe button. See you next time!